So this is beautiful. This is a shave biopsy of uh, a thick, scaly lesion that uh, clinically they thought was a seborrheic keratosis or maybe a wart. And from low power, it does look a lot like a wart. It's got in-towing of the reedy ridges at the edge. It's got papillomatosis, all those things that I told you about. But at higher power, we have something more interesting going on. The epidermis here looks quite different than normal epidermis. And what's different about it, there's a few things. Number one, the keratinocytes are falling apart and leaving white space here. But they're not falling apart like, like you would see, say, in acanthalysis. Acanthalysis, you have the cells fall apart and round up into these nice, densely, uh, these nice little round keratinocytes and leave a lot of space. Here, the, the, the epidermis looks kind of white and pale and ratty. Like it's still fall, like the, the actual cytoplasm of the cells is kind of falling apart. And the cells are kind of rounded up, but they have a really bright, dense pink color. Not like the, not quite like the color. If you go compare this to normal, uh, like dyskeratosis in, in Grover's or Dairy A's, this looks different. This is this brightly, bright eosinophilic blobs in the cytoplasm. And then the, in between, you get this kind of white, uh, frilly, um, frothy look where the, the cells are kind of being destroyed. And then you'll also see kind of a thicker layer of hypergranulosis and hyperkeratosis over top. But the key things really to recognize are the bright pink blobs in the cytoplasm and this kind of white pallor where the cells are falling apart. So we call this epidermolysis. And this is actually an example of epidermolytic hyperkeratosis or EHK as we abbreviate it. <clears throat> what this is, is due to a mutation in the genes for keratins one and keratin 10. Keratin 1 and 10 are the keratins that make up the spinous layer of the skin. The basal layer is made of keratin, mostly uh, keratins 5 and 14 in the keratinocytes there, so that's why they're not affected, because the mutation just involves the 1 and or 10 uh, keratin genes. And what's happening is, is the mutation is leading to a change in the amino acids so that when the protein is translated, the keratin protein, which is normally supposed to make long filaments that stretch across the epidermis, I'm sorry, that stretch across the cytoplasm of the keratin and hook up to desmosomes at each end, which then hook up to neighboring cells, and that's why the epidermis is a strong network. So instead of making those nice long uh, filaments, the keratin folds incorrectly and gets all clumped together and, and makes these pink blobs. So these pink globular eosinophilic areas that you're seeing, those are actually misfolded keratin proteins. And because the keratin is not forming correctly in the spinous layer, the epidermis is starting to fall apart and lice. So that's why we call it epidermolytic um, and hyperkeratosis because it usually has a thick layer of keratin over top. So when you see that bright pink and that kind of funny pattern, it's a very distinct look. Once you've seen this a few times, you'll recognize it right away. So there's a few settings that we see EHK in. <clears throat> Number one, we often see it as a tiny little incidental foci in the normal skin of everyday individuals. We'll see it like on an excision specimen for melanoma, for example, or something like that. So in that setting, it doesn't mean anything. And what it's probably is, is it's due to a mosaicism, a mutation in the keratin one or 10 gene in the little stem cell that gives rise to that tiny focus of epidermis. So in that case, you'll have like a focus that looks just like this maybe. A little tiny focus of EHK and the rest would be normal skin. Uh, the other setting that we see it in is, um, is in patients that have a germline mutation in keratin 1 or 10 and um, actually have EHK involving a lot of the skin of their body, particularly the flexural areas, um, and it gives them this really thick, almost tree bark looking um, uh, skin and due to all of this keratin build up on top. And so those patients actually have a form of ichthyosis that's called epidermolytic hyperkeratosis. So that's the original kind of description of, of EHK, but it's actually the least common time. We don't see that very often. Thank Thankfully, but that's a that is due to a germline mutation and um, is kind of a uh, is a real problem for those patients because it really causes them to have abnormal skin that they have to deal with their whole life. And then more recently, what we've seen is um, EHK described in solitary lesions. So again, this was a solitary lesion. The rest of the patient's skin was normal. This looked like a seb or a wart clinically, and you can see their skin out here is totally normal. And now they've got this single keratinocytic lesion that shows epidermolytic hyperkeratosis within it. 
So this can be referred to as an epidermolytic acanthoma. An epidermolytic acanthoma is just a benign keratosis that has EHK just in the setting of the, um, of the lesion itself. And you can see EHK in a few other, other settings as well that are a little more esoteric. But I think this is really useful because um, this is one of these things that you'll get a biopsy and you'll be like, what on earth is this? I don't recognize this change. So what I sign these out, I say epidermolytic acanthoma. And I usually make a comment that if this is a solitary lesion, this is just a benign, uh, a type of benign keratosis. And obviously, if the patient has a more diffuse ichthyotic process, um, then that would be um, something that needed to be worked up further. And usually, that's really pretty obvious clinically because those patients have abnormal skin in many areas in their body um, that's really obvious to the, the patient themselves and also to their friends and family and to their um, treating physicians. So a nice example, really, really classic example, I think, of an epidermolytic acanthoma. <clears throat> and it's just a form of benign keratosis that you can see the normal skin on the sides and then the EHK skin. And so again, one closer look at EHK. Misfolded keratin proteins making bright eosinophilic um, globules or, or aggregates in the cytoplasm. And then in between the, the remnants of keratinocytes that are kind of falling apart, hypergranulosis over top and then hyperkeratosis above that.